Assalamu alaikum and hi. Welcome to the clip of knowledge regarding the structure of international law. This video is part of our group assignment in the international law course. So let us start on the first part of this video, which is the definition of international law. Firstly, what is international law? According to Jerry Bentham, an English philosopher, he defined international law as a collection of rules governing relations between states. The evolution of modern international law made Bentham's definition become a bit irrelevant. This is due to the dynamic and vital elements of modern international law, which is individuals and international organizations. Although it is no longer accurate to view international law as a simply collection of rules, rather, it is a rapidly developing complex of rules and influential. In its broadest sense, international law provides normative guidelines as well as methods, mechanisms, and a common conceptual language to international actors. Now, let us move on to the next part, which is the history of international law. So, the Ulster Treaty was concluded, was done in 1283 before Christ. It was between the Ramesses I of Egypt and the king of Hittite. It was for the establishment of eternal peace and brotherhood between the two kingdoms at that time. Modern international law evolved out of Renaissance Europe and at that time intertwined with the creation of Western political organizations. The birth of the modern international law was around 1648 when the Treaty of Westphalia was formed. The Peace of Westphalia was a series of peace treaties signed between May and October 1648 in the Westphalian cities of Osnabrück and Munster that ended the Thirty Years' War in Europe. It was one of the most important documents in the history of Europe. The member of the treaty is subjected to the details of the treaty. Now moving on to the next part will be public and private international law. International law itself is divided into conflict of laws which is known as private international law and public international law usually just term international law. Public international law refers to the law that governs different nations and the interaction between them or their government bodies. Unlike private international law, it touches more broadly on politics, diplomatic relations, human rights, while on the other hand, private international law refers to the law, rules, regulation, treaties, protocols, case law, that govern private individuals in an international context between more than one country or different jurisdiction. For example, criminal law, cross-border transaction. In my part, I will discuss about what is the relationship between international law and municipal law. Okay, before any other things we are going to discuss, let us define what is a municipal law. Municipal law is the national or domestic internal, internal law of a sovereign state defined in opposition to international law. Municipal law includes not only law at the national level but the law at the state's provincial, territorial, regional or local levels. While as far as the law of the state is concerned, this may be distinct category of law. International law is largely uninterested in this distinction and treats them all as one. Similarly, international law makes no distinction between the ordinary law of the states and its constitutional law. Article 27 of the Vienna Convention of the Law of Treaties provide that a treaty conflict with the state's municipal law, the state is still obliged to meet its obligation under the treaty. The only exception of this rule is provided by Article 46 of the Vienna Convention, where the state's expression of consent to be bounded by a treaty was a manifest violation of a rule of internal law of fundamental importance. Municipal law, uh, simply, uh, simple, it can be explained as municipal law is the specific law of the country, but not a uh, a law they are followed by every country in the world and to have their municipal law actually they have a body within the city or the county this can cover a range of issues like police power in the country zoning education policies and property tax and now we are moving to international law 
international law is a system of treaties between nations that govern how nations interact with other nations. How a nation interact with other nations. Mostly, and the source of international law is the treaty itself. So, how does these two law having relationship with each other? In the part of view, there are two for there are two approach. First is dualist approach, and the second is monist approach. In dualist approach, they say that international law and municipal law is regarded as two separate legal system in order operating their own competence. To implement international law domestically, it requires a transformation in which international law will be mindfully transformed through the legislation of the country. It needs to be sanctioned and it needs to give uh, the person to implement the law that only the international law can be implemented in the ministry. By Moni's approach, they say that international law and municipal law are the same legal order. This is an auto reception of IL, international law and municipal law without common needs to localize the law, which is anything that in Moni's approach, anything that come up of an international law will automatically will become as a municipal law in the country. But in the dualist approach, if law from the international law need to be localized, need to be um, legislate need to need to go a certain transformation through the legal domestic legislation in order to pass through international law to make it uh, visible in the uh, international law for example like in malaysia the national treaties will be imp only implemented if they have been transformed into domestic law by means of official legislation and the application of customary international law under the article 160 federal constitution in Malaysia, definition law encompass written law, common law, etc. In so far as is consistent with our federal constitution. So the topic I will discuss today is about uh, the issue of international law. Uh, in other words, the witnesses of international law. Uh, even the systems are uh, be established to standardize and regulate all the international society. They also have a cons. And I will discuss and explain to you about how the witnesses of international law can be impact to the international society. And there are three main reasons that the witnesses of international law can be discussed and arguments among international society. And my first point is uh, the lack of uh, legislative machinery. And as we know, uh, since the international law are based on the convention and treaties, uh, therefore, uh, the country are uh, interpreted by all the states and they are pursuing uh, their own self-interest and they are not determined what the objective of international law it should be. And this has been, been questioned a lot of international society why they are not uh, to be more efficient and effective uh, towards this uh, legislative machinery. The second point of the witnesses of international law that I think is Mostly the international societies uh, agree because there's a lot of uh, you know arguments on these uh, points. It is uh, the lacks of the international court justice uh, in the terms of a true sense of compulsory uh, on section eight. And due of that, the ICJ, which is located uh, in Hague, Netherlands, is not authorized uh, to handle all cases. And due of that, they only can be filed in the in the courts and with the mutual consent of the consents of states and all of that uh, I think ICJ should be uh, clearly the framework and structure back on the terms of a law that implement or execute uh, in the, the third point or the last point that I think that will be discussed in the witnesses of international law is the lack of effectiveness uh, in a post of sanctions. The rules of international law always been seen as violated uh, by the big big country because uh, this, uh, this, this big country always intervene uh, in the conflict countries. Such as like in the Middle East countries, they always import sanctions and do of that, uh, the international law is not seen as to be a consultant to resolve the problems and do of that, 
uh, the, the these big countries always uh, breach or violates uh, the rules of international law that seen as a resolve in any disputes and to send a death or to execute the sentence of law uh, in a breach of criminal in international uh, level.